All right, as promised, we are joined by Jason Trenner, founder of Strategus Partners, one of the top ranked strategists in the country, and that's uh, ranked by institutional investor. I do my best. Yes, you do. That's why you're here. Street smart. Trying to help us all be a little smarter. So you heard President Obama speaking today about this jobs plan. What's your view and what does it do for the markets? You know, my view is that it's a non-starter, mainly because everyone in Congress tells me it's a non-starter. So I, I, it's, it's interesting. I understand why the president's doing it, but I'm not expecting it to really move the needle in terms of economic growth or even the deficit. So either positive or negative, one way or another. The super committee, I would say, is the next big thing out of Washington. And to be candid, we have a more optimistic view of what could happen out of that than the market does, where I think the expectations are so low that in some ways you almost can't beat them. But, uh, but for the next couple of months, I don't think much is going to happen. All right. You say you effectively think this thing is dead on arrival. We actually have a clip from President Obama. Take a listen. This is what he said earlier today. The problems Europe is having today could have a very real effect on our economy at a time when it's already fragile. But this jobs bill can help guard against another downturn if the situation in Europe gets any worse. If the situation in Europe gets any worse, do you have faith that Europe is actually going to ring fence the problem? No, not at this point. I would say while there's a chance we avoid recession here in the States, I would say the chances of Europe avoiding recession are about zero. You have an overvalued currency, you're looking at fiscal austerity, uh, you've been tightening at very high long-term interest rates, and then you have big existential questions about what currency everything is negotiated in. So it's hard to do long-term planning when you have that array of problems. So I think you, I think Europe will get worse. And there's nothing I've seen, at least from the Greek government, that suggests they're doing any sort of substantive reforms. I, to my knowledge, not a single public sector worker has been laid off in Greece. So it's very tough to get optimistic uh, that they're going to come up with a solution. On the assumption that markets are all linked, economies are all linked, 70 percent of the sales for the S&P are outside the U.S., if you have a recession in Europe, how can you avoid a recession here? Well, the, the one thing I could say, it's almost it, it just a little bit math, just to the extent to which, in terms of non-exports, like housing and autos, uh, you're at such low levels of consumption that uh, there's a chance that you're, you're just at replacement levels that you can't fall a lot further. So I, I do think it's very hard to have an, uh, robust economic growth in the U.S. if Europe goes into recession. It's possible that we avoid kind of numerically a recession in the U.S. if, if Europe uh, does weaken. But it but, sure feels that, like a recession. But it's going to feel close enough. And I, I would say in terms of earnings expectations, earnings expectations, in my view, have to come down. And we're, we're expecting them to come down uh, with third quarter earnings. Expectations guidance for next year, in our view, is, is very much at risk. Guys are still too bullish? I think so, especially in the industrials and financial sectors. If you look at uh, where the big gains in earnings expectations are for next year, that's where they are. Uh, right now, S&P, people, people are using $110, the bottom-up estimates. That would be a 15% increase off of this year. Very hard to do that if you're looking at 1% real GDP in the U.S. in a recession in Europe. Yeah, we will talk a lot about that. Your estimates, your estimates of GDP as well as uh, the earnings numbers. Let's turn back to Jason Trenner, managing partner and chief investment strategist at Strategus, excuse me, research <laughs> partners. It, yeah. Sorry, it's a tongue twister. He's down at the uh, New York Stock Exchange, of course, with my partner Adam Johnson. And uh, Jason, let's start off. I want to take a look at your growth estimates for 2011, 2012, 2013, specifically in comparison to what you're calling bottom-up analysts, which I would otherwise say are probably sell-side analysts, exactly. you're much more bearish. In fact, looking at a 2013, we're still looking at estimates for growth rates at 11 percent for most analysts, consensus on the street. You're suggesting negative 9.3 percent. What is it that you're looking at that the rest of the guys aren't paying any attention to? Well, you know, we're, to we're uh, top-down people. We're economists and strategists. So we're looking at what we think is going to happen with overall growth uh, on a global scale. And so while uh, Adam and I were talking, I don't think there's a big chance of recession in the U.S. in 2012. I do think the chances of a recession by 2013 are actually probably something like two and three. Now, it's likely to be mild. And even from an earnings standpoint, I know that seems severe, but most of the time when you have uh, a recession, earnings will fall 25 percent from the peak. So that's about half as much as you would normally get. I know it's scant solace for anyone that's out there, 
Uh, but it's painful. It's painful. And I, I think, again, I think the expectations have to be brought in, uh, given what we're looking at globally as far as economic growth is concerned. All right, Jason, with that in mind, right, we've had it, we've had for pretty much the last two and a half months, risk on, risk off seems to define every single day or every hour of trading. Do we continue to see demand for sort of safe haven assets, specifically treasuries? Listen, I think so. I mean, I know it's, you know, it's hard, uh, on one level, it's hard to lend the U.S. government money at 2% for 10 years. I mean, it doesn't seem like that's the best use of cash. Uh, but by the same token, I think there's an awful lot of people out there who are feeling that they'll rather accept negative rates of return in real terms, that is after inflation, rather than the possibility of absolute losses from risky assets. Just keep my money safe. That's Just right. don't let it go away. Exactly. So I'll lose purchasing power all day long, but I'm not going to, at least for now, until I know what the rules of the game are as far as what's happening in the U.S., what's happening in Europe. Uh, until those issues, those big secular issues, Lisa, are resolved, it's going to be very, very hard, I think, for risk assets to mount a sustainable rally. There will be periods where people will be nibbling uh, you know, at the bottom, we've seen over the last couple of days. But a big sustainable rally, I think, is very hard until these big questions okay. are 